Number six, um, we can only address warned articles. It's against state law to consider articles that haven't been warned on the agenda. So what you see on the agenda is what you get in terms of taking by the action. Number seven, you can end debate by what's called calling the question. If a voter feels that deliberation has gone on long enough, a voter can move to cut off debate by raising their hand, being recognized, and saying, I call the question, or I want to end debate. And two thirds of the group must then vote yes on calling the question in order to cease debate. Otherwise, we just keep on talking. In most cases, calling the question isn't necessary. Um, the moderator will call for a vote when he or she feels that all, votes, uh, that all points of view have been heard and there are no more hands raised. And uh, if we do it this way, it avoids having to vote on calling the question so we can actually save time. And finally, number eight, Robert's Rules offers different ways that we can vote. Hopefully you're familiar with these. Um, once the moderator feels that all the points of view have been heard, he or she will call for a vote, usually by voice. So if you're in favor of the motion, say aye, oppose, say no or nay. The two other forms of voting that you might see at this meeting, um, a show of hands for a standing vote. This is also called the vision of the house. That's the fancy term for it. You can always request uh, a division, show of hands, standing vote, especially if you disagree with the moderator after the result of a voice vote is announced. And finally, a paper ballot or secret ballot. Um, this is an important option to know about if you feel that privacy on a vote is important. Any voter can move that a vote be taken by paper ballot. Um, and if seven voters uh, support the motion, then pieces of paper will be distributed uh, and you will write your on your vote on it and, and pass it in. And if we do have that, you'll, you'll need to return to your, your point of origin, your town clerk table where you checked in to begin with and they will give you your that. Um, and asking for one of those, as I mentioned, it just takes seven voters um, to support that motion. Um, and uh, the election officials will count those immediately. Can be done. Is a motion. Okay. So at this point, I want to do a welcome. Um, in, in my town of Middlesex, we have a tradition of beginning our town meeting with a civil invocation as a welcome. This invocation originated many years ago in Danville, actually, Danville, Vermont, and it's now used in many town meetings across Vermont. In Middlesex, it's usually read uh, by a new voter or someone who is about to become a voter, usually a young person. Um, so tonight, I asked, uh, I invited Ginger Knight to read our invocation. Um, Ginger is a U32 junior from East Montpelier. She's not 18 yet, but unless there's an objection, Ginger will welcome us. Ginger's active in a lot of U32 activities, including the school's diversity organization and uh, the Seeking Social Justice Club. She's also an athlete, as I mentioned. She plays tennis in the spring. She has cross country running in the fall. She just wrapped up the cross country skiing season. This winter, by the way, both the U32 boys and girls teams were state champs this year. So thank you, Ginger. Good evening. Welcome to this Five Town School District special meeting. We have come together in civil assembly in a democratic tradition that is older than our state itself. We come together to make important decisions. As we deliberate, let us advocate for our positions but not at the expense of others. Let us remember that there is an immense gap between saying, I am right, and saying, I believe I am right. And that our neighbors with whom we disagree are good people and hopes and dreams as true and as high as ours. And let us always remember that in the end, caring for each other in our communities and together is of far greater importance than any difference we may have. Welcome. Thank you, Ginger. We are now going to start with Article 1, to elect the following officers of the district from among the qualified voters of the district, which officers shall assume office upon election and serve for a term of one year or until their successors are elected and qualified. Um, and we will start with moderator. This is a position that I am not seeking. Is there a nomination? My name is Vera Frazier from the town of Berlin, and I would like to nominate Gus Seeley. 
Vera Frazier from Berlin nominates Gus Seelig. Seconded. Vera Frazier from Berlin nominates Gus Seelig. Are there other nominations? Yes. I'd like to nominate Paul Hanlon. Okay. Thank you, Biden. <laughs> <laughs> Can you say your name? Sorry for the for the minutes. Buzz Berger from Berlin. Buzz Berger from Berlin nominates Paul Hanlon. Paul Hanlon respectfully declines the nomination, just like Calvin Coolidge. <laughs> Any other nominations? I'd like to call. We don't need a second. This is, I looked it up. This is one of those ones we don't need a second on. And I'd like to very, very simple ballots. I'd like to move that we cast one ballot. Very, very simple ballots. I'd like to move that we cast one ballot. Very, very simple ballots. Like okay. So, Gus um, Seelig has been nominated for the Gus Seelig Award. Um, Gus Seelig has been It actually takes a, um, I'm just going to go ahead and easy. We only have one, one candidate um, for uh, moderator. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Uh, to make it official, all those in favor of Gus Seelig for moderator, please say aye. Aye. Those go. The ayes have it. And Gus Seelig is your moderator. You are in good hands. Thank you. Susan, thank you very much. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I live over in East Calais. I've been there since about 1977. Um, in terms of community service, I got to know this Central Vermont community by serving, I think, 11 years on the East Montpelier Fire Department. Uh, my kids have graduated, both one from the Calais Elementary School and one from Berlin, and both from here. And this particular space I'm fond of because my younger daughter learned to do lighting design uh, in this room, and that's now her career. Um, I just do need to warn you because of the way the lights work, and because I'm of an age when my vision isn't what it once was, you, seeing out is not what these lights are designed to do. They're designed to put lights on a stage, so I'm not going to recognize many faces, even though uh, there are many of you whom I know from, from this podium. Um, Susan's done a great job of giving you the rules for, for this meeting, so I'm not going to go over them except to say that uh, as a moderator in Callis, I've made more than one mistake over the years I've done that. Usually it happens when we're going too quickly, um, but I do want to emphasize if you're confused or you think I've made a mistake, um, you can ask for a point of order, a point of information, and you can certainly ask to overrule the ruling of, moderate, of this moderator if you think I'm in error. Um, so, uh, with that as an opening. They're saying it's too loud, you need to stand up straight. It's pretty perspective. Okay, sorry I'm too close to the microphone. Um, with that as an opening, the next job is to elect a clerk. Do we have any nominations for the office of clerk? Yes. Microphone's on its way. <laughs> no, I am Richard Keene, Town of Dallas. I would nominate Mary Weinstein for clerk. And may I nominate the treasurer as well as I Can we do both at the same time? I think we can. So Mary's been nominated for both offices. Um, are there any other nominations? Yeah, there's a hand over here. My name is Ronald Warnick, I'm from Town of Berlin. We can nominate Rosemary Morse for clerk. Okay, so we have two nominees. Do we have any other nominees? Okay, um, so can we do this by division or do we need a, a ballot for, we can do this? Okay. And the second nominee, I'm sorry, I just I didn't write the name down. 
Rosemary Morris, the Commonwealth Court for the Commonwealth Court. Okay. Okay, so Rosemary Morris is one nominee and Mary Morris is the other, and that was also for both offices, sir.
includes in the default articles of agreement an item for any other business to be transacted. So this mortgage is actually defective under the state board order. And it, I think in these circumstances, it's appropriate to add a non-binding resolution like the one I suggested. Um, okay, well, I think we need to get through the other business. Um, and uh, depending on how long that goes and how many people are still here and whether people have headed off to watch a basketball game, um, it would certainly be appropriate from my perspective for you to offer those comments when we get through the rest of the agenda. Yes, sir. And please identify yourself. I am uh, Christy Bivens. That's in a joining in Kyle's, I'm going to call it a motion uh, for a resolution because if we do not do it at this point and take votes without uh, the understanding that uh, it is not a consent to the murder, uh, which is currently a forced murder, uh, then the votes that would have been taken can be construed as uh, having waived any objection to the voice to the uh, forced murder and consenting to it. Um, I don't think coming at the very end of the votes would have a binding and retroactive effect on the votes that have already been taken. So um, I think I would recommend and urge uh, the, the, the meeting as a whole to take up this resolution so that it is clear to um, what we're doing here. Uh, we'll be voting on various things, and I don't think we can go back in time at the end of the meeting when it, even our honorable uh, moderator noted that there's a basketball game tonight that some people may want to leave early for. Uh, and lose, you know, lose some of our voters. So as we go through the articles um, that are on, on the agenda, we should have in mind um, our, um, Kyle's resolution. And I would urge us as a group to take it up now, not later, <coughs> before any more substantive votes are taken.
on this issue because I think we have a lot of people here tonight, like myself, and looking around, I'm seeing a lot of others who uh, are strongly opposed to forced merger. Uh, but at the same time, we're here and we want to work together cooperatively on these parallel tracks and kind of choosing among bad options where we are and we're willing to, to do that. I think this will go really smoothly if we can just make a clear record that nothing that happens tonight is consented in any way to the forced merger. I think I've worded that very neutrally. I think if we can do that right away, it will make things much easier going forward. Okay, so the question in front of you is to Is, the, is whether to overrule the ruling of the moderator so you can take this resolution, which is non binding, up right away. So, all of those, is there any further discussion? If not, yes, I'm going to clarify that. So, if you want to sustain the ruling of the moderator, you're going to vote yes. If you want to take this up right away, you're going to vote no. Okay, and it's Excuse me? It's good to do this until it's clear. The moderator's ruling was that we should take this up at the end of the meeting. That's been challenged. That's fine. Barry's a good friend. A good argument's been made for why to take it up now. If you want to overrule the ruling of the moderator, if you want to sustain the ruling of the moderator, that's the proper way that this is framed, you're going to vote yes. If you want to get to this right away, you're going to vote no, and then we'll take it up. So those of all, all, all those in favor of sustaining the ruling of the moderator say, say yes. Yeah. Yes. Those opposed say no. No. And those appear to have it, and those do have it, and I'm now going to recognize the fellow who got us into this to begin with. To <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kyle Landis, Marinello from Millsex. And just for the record, it was the state that got us into this. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, so again, I move to have a non-binding resolution that states as follows. Nothing that happens tonight shall be interpreted as consenting in any way to force merger. Do we have a second? There's a second there from John Graham. Okay. Further discussion? Are you ready for the question? Yes. All those in favor of the red? Please say the state your name. My name is Laura Diaz. And I don't think I don't think it has any impact in terms of 
moving forward or, or any of the votes that will be taken? Well, there's a, a range of studies that the teachers and the contracts and our budget and our kids. Yeah. Okay, we have a hand up right in front of the fellows just speaking. And please speak to the moderator, not to each other. Uh, <clears throat> Mark Chaplin, Middlesex. I just uh, want to put a point of clarification. I'm, I'm wondering, uh, this is asking us um, to say that we're not going along um, with the um, forced merger. What are the hopes and plans or dreams of this group? What, what is it that they would like to accomplish? With it? Is it uh, that they would like to challenge this in court? Is it that they're hoping that the legislature shoots it down? Um, where, where is this, where are they hoping this will go? objected so 
Uh, if somebody wanted to make a motion uh, to change the order, it'll take two thirds to do that. Do we have, is there somebody on the executive committee that wanted to make that motion? Floor? somebody came up with for changing the order here was we can't we could have this district meet on town meeting day if we were deciding to vote by Australian ballot and they'll need to find another date for annual meeting and so on if it's not going to be by Australian ballot is that correct Okay, 
So we are on the question of whether or not to change the order of the warning. Are you ready for the question? Yes. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? We are changing the order, and we are taking up Article 3. So would somebody like to move Article 3? Floor? Do we have a second? Okay, we're taking up Article 3, and it's being moved to determine whether to vote on the district's budget and all other public questions by Australian ballot. So we're open for discussion on that issue. Clarification. Yes, sir. Is, is a motion to vote on the district's budget and all other public questions by Australian ballot? That's my understanding, yes. Thank you. So, so we're open for discussion. We'll go to the middle and then to the first row in the back. That's the work for cows. I just want to know if we're going to be using yellow cards or we're going to allow people to indicate by using a voice to vote. One reason I asked is for clarification on the earlier point that was made. The yellow cards are only given to registered voters. It becomes really, really close. I think, I don't know if that, I'm not sure exactly how that works, but I thought this indicated who registered voters and everyone else did not. So my approach is that I'm going to, you go to a voice vote first. If you think it's close, please say division, and then we'll use the yellow cards. Okay? Does that work for you, sir? Okay, and then we have a hand in the middle. To the right, and put it on. John Welch, uh, East Montpelier. I thought the, vote, the motion that we were voting on was to change the order. We did that. We did that. Okay, now on that first row. Richard and Dean Cowles. Uh, I'm a little concerned it was Australia. I didn't call this vote. Okay, well, we need to speak up. Okay, I don't know. Uh, Richard and Dean Cowles, I'm a little concerned about Australia and Babylon. Is it inconvenient as it is? Get it closer. We are, I, I more than ever, kind of resolve myself to have the four of those. It's inconvenient as it is for everyone. I think Australia is distancing people from this decision making more than should be the case. Which, so would that be a no vote on the vote for Australia with that default? If, if you don't want Australian ballot, you should vote no. Thank you. Okay, we have a hand up in the middle here. Stuart Clark from Worcester. I'm absolutely opposed to voting on the budget and public questions by Australian ballot. If we're going to be in a unified district with folks coming from several towns, it's important for us to get together and discuss what we're voting on. I agree with the gentleman that just spoke that Australian ballot voting separates us from the process. When we're in a meeting like this, we can question the budget, we can amend the budget, we can hear from the officials that we're voting on. This is the process. Let's keep our actions in an open meeting. We have a hand right on the left here. Thank you, Leslie Finch from Callis. I'm speaking to the issue of whether this should, these decisions on the district budget um, and other items should be held by Australian ballot. There is nowhere here in our district where we can hold all of our registered voters from all five towns. There are a huge number of registered voters in our district who cannot, would not, be able to come and participate. We, I'm sure, no one wants to do anything to make it difficult, if not impossible, for a large number of our community members 
not to vote on something so critical as these budgets for our schools. So we need to do these budget decisions by Australian ballot so everyone in the community has an equal opportunity to vote. Okay, fellow in the middle. Ms. Fitch, Ruben Bennett, he's not clear. Ms. Fitch just said pretty much everything that I have on my mind. I will say that um, it was only a couple of years ago, it was like three days ago, that we were as a town of East Montclair having this exact same discussion about whether we should vote uh, on the floor or vote by a straight out of our school budget. Uh, I spoke passionately in favor of the floor vote, but it is not feasible to have all of the potential voters of five towns come together. I mean, we can hardly conduct ourselves in a meeting of this small group. The idea of actually being able to get business done in a group that large over something that has as as it is right now strikes me as completely infeasible. So I would strongly urge all of us to support Australian dollar for the business. They're going all the way over to the right. There was a hand over here. <coughs> I, you know, you're just going to have to suffer because I can't see everybody all at once, but I'll get you next, okay? And I Hi, I'm Kim Zalkovich. I'm from East Montpelier, and I'm very much in favor of Australian ballot for this. Um, not only do the original vote information we need for people to know and hear what's going on and what you should be voting on, but it also allows people to vote not just because they're working, but people that have to use absentee ballots can still vote this way. And uh, it's a loss. I don't want to lose being able to vote by absentee ballot if it's necessary. Okay, over here. Yes. I'm Jan Olson from the House. I am very concerned about the language. All other public questions is very broad. Would you like to divide the question? Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm going to rule that we can divide this question into two. So we'll first take up the question of voting on the budget by Australian ballot, and then we'll get to all other questions. Is there further discussion? Yes. Here. Uh, Ellen Kane, Barbie, I just want a clarification on this. If we decide to not take up the budget by Australian ballot, is score vote our only option and will it default to that? Because I think people need to be aware of what it might mean. Is there something else that it might uh, uh, go to other than score? Does anybody have the answer to that? I certainly don't. Okay. Well, I spoke early on this uh, on this question, and I'd just like you to think and recognize that the process we've just experienced is uh, part of the education that we get in an open meeting. Uh, I'm very pleased that the moderator is willing to divide this into a question on voting on the budget versus all other public matters. If you need an amendment, I'd be willing to propose that. Otherwise, uh, I'm glad that we've divided the question. Right here. Hi, I'm Michelle Nutter, Richard Matthew. You need to get closer to the microphone. I can't hear you. Can you tell us what all five towns, how they currently vote now? I cannot. Can we have the town first because they're here and they know? Is there somebody who can answer that question? And there's a hand on the right here.
for the budget except for Worcester, which has voted from the floor. John, can I clarify that the bill will be thirty two. For the elementary school budgets, the youth, the high school, middle school budget is voted us for that at all. Okay, and we have that mailer in the there. There are a few people in this audience who remember the origins of U32. In the first many years, it was um, a, a four vote in this room filled with people. And we talked about it, and it was good. <laughs> okay, over here, yes, sir. Chris uh, McBear from Middle Sex. And I would urge us, I would urge us to consider more votes for our budget. Uh, Mr. Clark, I think it is from Wilson, uh, made a great point about discussion that we're having tonight. The, even though Australian ballots would probably have more people voting, um, they would not have more people discussing. And to say that we can't do it because it's too hard, is that the lesson we want to instill in our students and in ourselves, particularly with technology, which could link up very, at various sites so that there's a real-time discussion? We don't know if all have to be in this room or in this building and still have a meeting all together and have discussions. Um, we, are, we, if we're going to be a unified district, we need to get to know each other in what more important way in terms of discussing what our budget priorities will be getting answers to questions which you don't get when you go in and check a box yes or no. So I would urge us to give us great, give great consideration to this, particularly since with the merger, um, our um, ability to be democratically involved has been shrunk from five different meetings to one. Okay. In the middle, and then we're going to go to the right, and then back to the left. Uh, we're just looking at the Palestine. It is, it is a pretty weak argument to not have a big enough space. We were forced into this consolidation to begin with. And you, the reality is you do not have, I, I've been to 30 pound meetings now in my life here in Vermont. I, I learned something in every one of them. I make a better decision than that. I know everybody but in Australian ballot issues, okay, we have informational meetings. Well, if you can't make a town meeting, you probably can't make an information meeting either. So you vote enough, and that is the reality of what it is. I think well, if we have to make that work. Chris McVeigh is right. I think we've got technologies that might let us do this from multiple sites. But the decisions made need to be suggested. We need to be educated on it. We can't just go ahead. We don't get the kind of information we need to make these decisions from the newspaper, especially from the newspaper. Thank you. Okay. Go up steps a bit. Brian Talia Ferro from Middlesex. Uh, I think that voting is one of the most fundamental opportunities and rights that we have as citizens and to create situations. I understand the spirit of having four meetings, uh, but accessibility and opportunity to engage in the democratic process by voting with your, your voice uh, is, I think, far more important than trying to come together and have this type of, sort of discussion that folks are talking about. There are other opportunities to access that information, to ask those questions, but I think when it comes down to it, for me, I feel that anything that is going to limit participation is not a good idea.
Okay, we have a hand down here, and then we'll come back up. Joanna Von Kielen from Middlesex, and I would just like to offer that I think this is a false dichotomy. It's not either discussion or vote. You can have discussion, and it's unfair to say that because someone can't make a particular meeting that they won't be able to make any meeting. So I would be completely for the side of having as many people, as many voters involved as possible. Call the question. Hand in the middle in red, and then there's a fellow above. You've got to be recognized in order to be able to call the question. So we'll see whether somebody wants to do that soon. Josh is you. This, uh, I don't know the exact numbers, but this budget of this district would be one of the largest budgets in Washington County. It would be an enormous budget because it's many times larger than any individual town. So I think that you really have to do it by Australian doubt if you want to get the participation of the project and supporting what's being done. But I do think that there's a great benefit to having this kind of discussion. Maybe there's a way of having a kind of representative town meeting, a representative group where you'll be delegated to town. Right behind you. Patrick Wood from Middlesex. I think I'd like to second what the gentleman from just said, and uh, I'm hearing great arguments on both sides of this discussion, and it supports that discussion is good. I don't know all of the rules, structures that will be setting um, this whole process up. But I wonder if there's a way that we could all come together, probably in this room being the biggest one, have discussion about the school budget, have productive discussion about the school budget, people can share ideas um, and in a way where their voice is heard so they have a best interest in coming rather than just an informational meeting. And the town or the group uh, needs to, in some way, um, then put forth or authorize the budget going forward that later comes out for Australian ballot. That way, everybody can have their voice heard. So I leave it up to other folks um, if that idea seems to have any legs to help you with how to implement it. Okay, there's a hand in the middle. So it's Chris Badrack from Callis. Um, you're a great point, sir. And I would say that the school board meeting is a great place to do that. Um, so the school board ultimately proposes a budget that's lowered up by the town. And also, I'd like to call the question, please. The question has been called, takes two thirds. All those in favor of ending the debate, please say aye. Aye. Those who want to continue, say nay. Nay. The ayes have it, and we're ending the debate on the first part of this question. And that question is to determine whether to vote on the district's budget. I think it's improper to have someone speak to an issue and then call the question. Please keep that in mind. You would know better than I, but I'm going to, I think, allow it given the overwhelming uh, nature of the vote. And I'll try to do better in the future. Thank you. Um, so the question is to determine whether to vote on the district's budget by Australian ballot. All in favor, please. Yes, sir. Carla Mary's popular. Can we state the, uh, the question in a way that actually uh, I think makes sense for us to be voting on is not to determine something. The question is that we discussed earlier is to vote on the district's budget by Australian ballot. You're correct, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So the question is whether to, whether to vote on the district's budget by Australian ballot. If you're in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, say nay. Nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it, and we've decided to vote by Australian ballot on the budget. The second part of the question is whether to vote on all other public questions by Australian ballot. Is there further discussion on that end of the discussion? Yes, in front, please. Uh, I think that all of the arguments in favor of using Australian ballot for the budget be very similar in 
in terms of this question. And um, sorry, I just wanted to note that. I would also, uh, I'm deeply, I'll just say that I'm, uh, I live in Worcester. I really value town meeting. I really value the floor vote process and the conversation that happens. But um, in a five town district, um, I'm really deeply invested in a democratic process that results in decisions that represent the will of the majority of the voters in our district. And I'm deeply concerned about um, any kind of process that essentially allows a small group of folks who are highly engaged and who we all may have deep respect for and have a particular perspective that is in the minority to win the day because the process allows for that. So I'm going to speak in favor of Australia for this as well. Hand over here. Uh, I think it learns more sense. I'm sorry, a little bit on my voice. Um, I do see the questions as fundamentally different, though. The budget the process is uh, pretty well established. It happens annually. We know exactly what to expect. This question of any other public questions is really ambiguous. And to the extent that we might want to have a forum where we're actually having a more involved discussion of what's going on, I think that demands greater participation than you know, kind of the like popular public stuff. In front, in the middle. Thanks. Michael Duane, East Montpelier. I think it makes sense to vote the uh, budget on an Australian ballot and vote for the directors by an Australian ballot. But I guess I have to agree. All other public questions, I, I just don't know what that is. It, it may be an excellent idea to vote that by an Australian ballot, or, or it may not. Um, I, I guess I think maybe can, can we pass this over and let the new board decide that something needs to come up and we'll have a vote on an Australian We know who's going to run or who's not going to run in future elections and future budgets, but all of the public questions just seem so broad. I just wish there was some way we could pass this over or postpone them or table or something. I don't know if anyone would agree with that or as a suggestion, but it just seems so, so broad. I could encompass anything. So, and Michael, was that a motion? <laughs> I move we uh, table this matter. I will be table the second part of Article 3, which was uh, as warned as Article 3, and all of the public questions. We will be table that to uh, one year. <laughs> we have a second. It's been moved and seconded that we table the second part of this question. For one year. For one year. This is a hand up here. Alice Amy, he's not clear. And for good or evil, I have been a superintendent for 26 years. So I've been through some uh, public meetings and making some agendas and making some warnings. I think that uh, perhaps we can answer the question of what are other public questions that this uh, motion anticipates. Such questions as uh, number nine on your uh, warning today is one of those other public questions. Um, they, they are what we get to them. People just say yes because they're housekeeping motions that allow the business it's not the fairies. So, Sorry, Alice. I, this is Rebecca Ray from East Montpelier. I just am not understanding if you're saying that um, these other questions should or should not be voted by a certain amount. Can she answer that? Yep. Please. Voted on by Australian ballot because 
there's a hand on the left. talking about whether to table this item. That's what's at stake here. Doesn't mean it can't be taken up again, although it would, we'd have to wait a year. So that's what would be the germane debate to have. And there's somebody waving up in the middle here. I have a question before the... Please identify yourself. Oh, my name is Rose. And then there's somebody down here to speak. Patrick Will from Middlesex. Um, if this motion said housekeeping items, I would certainly feel a lot more comfortable with it being just voted on that. It does not say that. It is not my problem. I wonder if there's a way to revise it. I think that was a friendly amendment. I'm not looking to hobble anything. I just, no problem. That's a great. Wait, wait for a microphone, great, Michael. That was a great. That was a great suggestion. Sorry. Thank so, you. to the extent there's any confusion, uh, I, I I agree. Uh, any kind of basic housekeeping, like borrowing, lieu, taxes, all that kind of stuff, that should should be by Australian ballot. But there's all other public questions, which is so broad. I just wish it was something we could have it be a little more narrow. So I would take that as a friendly amendment to my motion. I'm, well, your motion is to table the article, so I'm confused about how we would make that an amendment. I don't think I see a way to do that. We could take it up if the motion to table fails. And no, I do have an amendment. <laughs> of course. Because despite what you set up here, you know, it might be this is a great idea. It probably is. 
and I don't want to hobble the board, so I would like to amend his motion to uh, just to get a definition of what these public questions are from the board at their at their leisure or their first meeting, whenever they so choose. Okay, I'm gonna take a brief pause so you guys can all stretch and consult, but I think we're on a motion to table, and I'm not, I think we have to either pass or defeat that in order to then amend the question to be about. Um, no, I'm amending his, he said one year. And I'm you're amending it. Amend to the first meeting or as soon as the newly elected board decides to pose it back to us or to whoever, whoever they need to as when it should be acted on, what those public questions are, a list of public questions. Is that acceptable, Michael? Yes. Okay, so we're now changing the time and giving the board the discretion as to when they will bring it back to us. Are you ready for that question? No. No, okay. Well, probably more at least up there. I'm confused now because of the amendment, but my understanding is that if we pass the motion to table the second half of this question, the board essentially on all on all public questions is unable they will then be unable to vote publicly in an open meeting or by Australian ballot. So when we vote to table this, the board essentially can't do its job for a year. Is that, is that no, I, I, I believe the it is now a motion to table for tonight, but not for a year, and then the board will bring back to us some list of things that would be voted on by Australian ballot that would be more narrow than all other public questions. So what the board would bring back in a month would have to, that would have to be voted on at a public meeting like this. That is correct. I'd still need to have another meeting and I'd still need to get up here again. <laughs> Scott Hesse's Montpelier. So we had 200 people last time. We have 30% or 40%. Any 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 issue that we talk about should be by the Australian ballot, whether it's major or minor. Everybody should have a chance to weigh in and participate. And we'll have 18 people next time. Are you ready for the question? Yes. And the question is whether to table this part of the article until the new board brings us back a more refined uh, set of criteria for what other public questions might be voted on by an Australian ballot. If you're in favor of tabling, please say aye. Aye. If you're opposed, say nay. Nay. The nays appear to have it. The nays do have it. And we're back to the question. And the question is whether to vote on other public questions by an Australian ballot. Are you ready for that question? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. And that part of the article is now passed. OK, we are now uh, on Article 4 to determine whether to elect members of the district board by Australian ballot. Would somebody like to move that? Yeah. Your name? And we have a second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? I actually would uh, rather than to determine say that we will elect members of the district board on Australian ballot. Yep. Discussion. Not really a sword choir blister. Not really sure how many district board members were going to be elected. I think the uh, articles of agreement, one of the one form that I've read said there'll be two members from each town. And then I saw an amended version that said three members from each town. However number of members were going to be voting for this district board. I think it's important 
that we hear from them as a group, that we get to question them and hear a presentation in an open meeting. I'll grant you there are good arguments in this room for Australian ballot voting. However, I think it's important to get together at the time of voting to hear what the representatives have to say and to question them. And like Dot Naylor, I was here in the beginning. I remember those district-wide meetings in the gymnasium with a bleachers pack, but lots of room on the floor for chairs. It wasn't an overflow crowd. It could be done. Thank you. Uh, Robert Hornick from the Town of Berlin. I'd like to make a motion to amend this article. I'd like to amend the article so that it reads with each town voting for their own board members. In other words, I really don't understand why I would want Dallas or nothing against Dallas or the other side. So it's not me or voting for Berlin representatives. Can you repeat that? Yes. Just closer to the microphone. My the... Uh, I'd like to amend it to read with each town voting only their own board members. In other words, the point being that I don't know that I want necessarily to have other towns voting on only board members. I mean, like conversely, I don't want to vote on these one bigger representatives. Okay. In the middle there, do we have a second for this yeah. amendment? Second. Okay. And that. We, um, it, it, it would change the number of members that we have to have um, on the board. Uh, we, my understanding is, um, for, correct me if I'm wrong, that to do it, to have two members from each town means that all the towns have to vote on all the directors. If we did it, but we all know the one man, one vote thing, to do that, it would be different numbers of, of, from each town, and at that point, we would be voting just within our own town. And, I, and that would make it, uh, personally, I would not like it that way. I think this is better when you have two members from each town. Yes, four. We don't get to amend this article. Uh, unfortunately, we, this is one of the articles that has been given to us because we are being consolidated after presenting an alternative that was not accepted. So we can't, the, our only option to amend this article is later, and that's when we have drafted some amendments that would include an extra member from each town. But at this point, we can't amend the article. I'm not sure I understood what you're saying when you said we can't amend the article. If, could I call in another member that is uh, a lawyer to explain this? But if we can't amend this article, we've been given draft articles of agreement by the Agency of Education and the State Board of Education. So if we change this right now, we would be changing what they have we would not be following the law, basically. So right now, our only option, and please, Kyle or Chris, I'm looking at you guys to, to help me out here. If we change this article right now, the article, we will be following the law. We can right now elect two members per town, and to be voted at large for every member, which we all have agreed that is much more fair for, for all the towns. It gave a greater voice to the smaller towns, too. Yes, sir. Uh, Chris, you may know the sex. So what Floor uh, and, and Dorothy are talking about is that uh, with the one person, one vote, and Dorothy only used one person, not one man, uh, is, uh, is that normally there would be proportional representation. Uh, and in order to um, have a system in which each town would have two representatives on this unified board, 
uh, and the person who was talking about three members on the Unified Board, that is an amendment that was uh, to go into effect July 1st of 2020, so it wouldn't be this go-around but next year. Um, but in order to have um, the two members from each town on this board, um, all of the voters from the Unified District need to be able to vote on all of the individuals who are running. And so if we restricted the individual members um, who are running to cap to individual towns and said only the voters from those towns can vote on those representatives that will be on the board, uh, then the uh, proportionality wouldn't work out. The reproportion uh, numbers would probably would be three to East Montpelier, three to Berlin, two to Callis, two to Middlesex, and one to Worcester. Uh, so that in order to have a even number of representatives for each town, every, all the voters from the five district need to be able to vote on all the votes who are running from, for the board, regardless of what town they vote. And, so, and so, so we actually, you know, I'm going to disagree with the board. This, I think, article could be amended. The article, with the floor is going to the default articles, with the articles of agreement. This could probably be amended, but the amendment would conflict with that two representative um, articles of agreement that we have. And it would throw, it would, this, it would cause a lot of trouble. Let me put it that way. Yes, sir, in the back. Wait for the microphone, please. Oh, yes, Robert Gordon, Berlin. Uh, I'm not changing, I'm not proposing to change the number of representatives per town. I'm just saying that those representatives of each town be voted on in their respective towns only. Uh, that's, why, that's how so, I think I'm with this. Yeah, and I think what people are advising you, and I may be wrong about this, is that if you don't have the whole district vote on all the members, then the then some towns will have more representatives. If you want to have only people from their own town vote on people from that town to represent them, you cannot have two members per town. And that, that's the question in front of the group. So I'm going to call for, I think we're probably ready to have a vote on this issue. Uh, so if you're in favor of the amendment, the input, which will be to only have folks from their own town vote for members of that town will affect how many how much representation each town has. But if you're in favor of making the, of supporting the amendment, please say aye. A point of order? Yes, sir. I, I didn't understand. It sounded like you were saying something different from his amendment. What I'm saying is that if his amendment passes that you can only vote for people from your town. What I've heard three people now say is that that will mean that each town cannot have two representatives. So I understand that, but he just clarified that's not this amendment. So unless he's going to adopt that particular point of view, I think we're at some kind of a bust here that I would like to challenge you on that. Uh, well, we need some of a change to take place before we vote. My understanding is that the thing we would have to change would be the Constitution. I think that the one person, one vote thing is a constitutional question. And there are two ways that we can be constitutional in our voting methods. And one of them is having equal numbers of people, per, uh, representatives per town, but everyone gets to vote on them. Or having a different number of representatives, more for bigger towns, fewer for smaller towns, and then you vote on them with your own with your own town. But we can't mix and match there. Um, because, and I think there was a lawsuit that went to, and, and told us that. But school board members can separate uh, Behind you, who's the next speaker? Kari Bradley from East Montpelier. I think the amendment is improper for two reasons. One is it would, it would constitute a significant change from what was born. And people didn't have the opportunity to come and weigh in on it. This, the second thing is, it would put us in uh, in contradiction with our default articles of agreement. And so I think what other people have been saying is that this is a, this is a topic for another day. 
Uh, the town will have it. Uh, people have a chance to vote on this, but it's not for today. I'm going to agree that, uh, and unfortunately rule that the amendment is having has spent this much time on it out of order and go back to the fundamental question and agree with you, sir, that this debate will need to be had on a different day in terms of whether it's going to be equal representation for each town or something different, which can be taken up at another time. So are we ready for the main? Yes? Yes, I recognize you, so you can call the question. So all those in favor of ending debate, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. And the ayes appear to have it, and the ayes do have it, and we're ending debate. So the question in front of us is, if you is to say we will elect, if you're in favor, you will be voting to elect board members of the district board by Australian ballot. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. And Article 4 is passed. The next question is to determine a date and location for the first annual meeting of the district and all subsequent annual meetings, which shall not be earlier than February 1 and not later than June 1 in each year is what's for. Is somebody going to move that article? Dot. Dorothy Hammer, Cal's. I move. I move the first annual meeting to be Tuesday, May 21st, 2019, at U32 High School at 6 o'clock. And all subsequent annual meetings to be held on the top of the day. We have a second. And second. Discussion? If not, are you ready for the question? Yes, put the hand in the middle, and then there'll be some on the side here. What will be the purpose of the annual district meeting to be held in May? I'm going to add one thing or two, but that said is that the May 21st also allows us to have possible, uh, possible 
the vote of the proposed Possible article. what? Vote of the amendments to the articles of agreement, so we will be able to have that discussion. As far as, I don't see why not, I'm looking at 7 to 7, that, that is what we do. Okay. So there's a hand right here. Agreement. 
So are the articles of agreement a topic for this May meeting? No. Dorothy, would you answer that question? Uh, they can be because they haven't been finalized and they would have to be finalized by next Monday, uh, April 15th, and um, I don't believe that that's going to happen. Um, but yes, we will have, have to have public meetings regarding the articles of agreement, and I'm hoping we will get the word out when those meetings are, and people will come and tell us what they want. And, and we'll have to tell them in some cases that the state will not allow us to do so. Okay, there's a hand on your left. Um, with regard to the residential house, with regard to the opportunity to discuss um, items that are going to be voted on by Australian ballot, I believe it's in statute that there have to be public meetings to present and make available and have discussion for any items that are going to be voted on by Australian ballot. You might have an Australian ballot worn for a particular date, but there is always going to be an opportunity for members of the public to come and hear about the articles, hear about the candidates, hear about whatever the matter is being presented to us. So you will have your, voters will have their opportunity to hear about it, ask, question, discuss with their fellow community members. Here we have a hand in the, oh, over here, and then we'll go to the middle. I'm Tony Blair, I'm from Just a point of clarification that there were default articles of agreement that came down from the Board of Education, but the, there have been a group of uh, board members from all of our district boards have been meeting for many, many months, really diligently, in board open meetings to discuss and propose amendments to those default articles. So, and anyone could attend those meetings um, going forward between now and when they're finalized, as well as any public forums that are held to present them. Bruce McKean from Cowles. I've been in some of these meetings. I've been part of them. Well, closer to the mic, I've been part of these meetings in time, and many of them. And you know, the reality is there's a difference in a meeting where you hear an argument, you hear a discussion about it, and then you vote, and, or you hear the argument presented, and you really don't get a vote. I mean, your vote comes from Australia now, and you should have that. This is the importance of this discussion. These articles are complicated. They are hard to understand. And they're usually pushed down on us from people who are not elected officers. But and they have, in many cases, motivations of their own. Not all, all are sinister. But by God, we're the people. This is our voice. We have got an obligation to show up and do democracy. We have a due diligence that we have to perform. And we, you know, it's not a perfect world, but my God, we're, we keep relegating these responsibilities off, and we're going to end up like the Kremlin again. And we're well on our way to do that, believe me. The past four years have proven that. This whole debate has alarmed me. I didn't think some of the things that have happened in this four year debate. I've been in that debate from the beginning. These things I did not think were possible in the state of mind. We have got to wake up and we've got to start taking this responsibility back. The question in front of us is actually setting the date for the annual meeting. It's been moved to do it on May 21st and then subsequently on town meeting day. Are you ready for that question? Yes. yes. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes do have it, and that article is passed.
Article 5, to determine and approve compensation, if any, to be paid to officers of the district. Is there somebody who's got a motion to make on this subject? Yes. I couldn't hear anything you said. We need an amount, I think. Anybody on the board prepared to make a motion on this? for the officers of the district in the amounts just stated, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> the ayes appear to have it. The vision's been called for. Can I get some what, well, the JPs to come forward in case we need a, to count? We'll try to do this visually, but if it's close at all, we'll have the JPs count. So all those in favor of the compensation, please raise your cards. You want to do this? I'll do this. You want everyone to say And put them down. Those opposed? I think that it's very clear that the those in favor of the article have moved the article or passed the article. Thank you. Okay, so the next article, Article 6, is to determine and approve compensation, if any, to be paid to members of the district board. Would somebody like to move that article? Yes, in front. closer to the microphone. Vera Frazier from Berlin. We, um, many years ago, decided to not be compensated for our time as board members. And I would like to make an amend to that motion to not be compensated for our time. That's been moved and seconded to amend the motion to have no compensation for board members. 
discussion or in, excuse me? From Berlin. Jennifer Berlin. Down here. First of all, I just very earnestly, Cal. I'd like to thank everybody who serves on the school budget. I expect that they do it for nothing. I think the folks who really want to donate their thousand dollars, there's plenty of community organizations that will accept it. But I think it's asking a lot to have people do the work that they do. And a thousand dollars is not number put in that guarantee is a, is a, a real deal. So I'm not going to support this event, I'm going to support it. That's what they're getting, but they're definitely going to pay for their time. So the question is whether to provide no compensation to the school directors. Are you ready for that question? All those, right, we're on the amendment, which would provide no compensation. So are we ready to vote on that? All those in favor of providing no compensation, please say aye. Those opposed? Aye. The nays appear to have it. We're back to the main question, which was to provide compensation of $1,000 for the directors. Yes, we have a hand up here. works in terms of the district's fiscal year. If the fi does somebody know when the fiscal year for the district begins? So the year hasn't begun, so I'm not sure prorating would have any impact. You've withdrawn the motion? Thank you. Are you ready for the question? Yes. All those in favor of providing compensation of $1,000 to the school directors, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? 
The eyes appear to have it, the eyes do have it, and that article is passed. Um, okay, again, uh, I've been asked to um, change, to take up Article 8 before we take up Article 7. Article, so unless there's an objection, I'll do that. Article 8 reads to authorize the district to borrow money pending receipt of payments from the state education fund by the issuance of its notes or orders payable not later than one year from the date provided, however, that the district is authorized by, the, by Vermont statutes to borrow sufficient funds to meet pending obligations. So, who's moving that? Thank you. Do we have a second? Do we have a second over here? Yeah, and, and your name, Megan? Thank you. We're open for discussion. Seeing no hands, oh, there's one. I, I was going to just have a vote. You want to vote on calling the question first? No, okay. All those in favor of Article 8, um, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, one more. To determine whether to authorize the Board of School Directors, oh no, I'm sorry, two more, Article 7, to establish provisions for payment of any expense incurred by the district before it becomes fully operational on July 1, 2019, under a voter-approved budget for the fiscal year beginning on that date. Is there somebody prepared to move this article? Yes. And do we have a second? Thank you. Ruben, do you want to explain this article? I tried to take a motion for an article earlier that needed numbers that I did not have. So I was looking for the Couldn't hear the end of your. I said I was poking a bit of fun at myself for making a motion for uh, an article that needed a budget that I did not have numbers for. Is there somebody from the executive committee who can answer the question that was just asked? Just to clarify the question, what are the provisions for payment of expenses incurred, et cetera, that is being moved in this motion? And that's what I'd ask somebody from the executive committee to explain to you, if somebody is willing. Can we just authorize it? <laughs> the man asks for an explanation. I think he should get one. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm looking at that. This is, this is just the typical procedure. I mean, they follow at every town meeting. Paul, do you think you can help us with this? I would, I would offer a friendly amendment to uh, the motion um, that the motion should be to authorize the payment of any expense incurred by the district before it becomes fully operational on July 1st under a voter approved budget for the district. Second. 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 Okay, and you are? Is that acceptable to the maker of the motion? Yeah. Can you say it again? Sorry. Motion is to authorize the payment of any expenses. You need to get closer to the mic. Sorry. The uh, motion is to authorize the payment of any expenses incurred, and the rest of the motion needs to be the one. Does that answer your question? Are we ready for the question? Diane Nichols Fleming from Berlin. So where is the provisions coming from? So we're authorizing provisions for payment, but is that coming from the money we're borrowing until we 
have a budget, or where where's the provision coming from? Okay, are we ready for the question? You now we have more questions. Paul Hannon, let's get the microphone to you. Paul Hannon, Calus. Close to the mic. Matthew, is that acceptable to you? Wait for the microphone.
Okay, are we ready to vote on this? Or do we have more discussion? So just to clarify, I think this is a standard provision which is actually required in statute. Whenever a new uh, municipality, which is still looking for this, is to be Can you speak up? I, I'm sorry, I'm a quiet speaker. Um, I believe that this provision is required by statute to be voted on by voters any time that a new municipality is created in the state of Vermont. The school district is a municipality. So that's kind of where the language is coming from. I understand people's confusion. I actually don't think, I think we're in a position now, given that a budget vote would come very late in the process, probably in the last week of June. Uh, we're, in, we're in a position where we probably are going to be required to um, pay for any expenses out of our current fiscal year budgets that we passed at um, last year's town meeting um, and continue to do that right up until July 1st, essentially. Um, I may be wrong about that. Maybe there's some exception to that, but I think it would be uh, a rare thing um, that we have to you know, start spending money as the new district before, before July 1st. Just, I don't think we're talking about Yes. Our goals is not clear. Well, maybe we can amend the motion to say that any to authorize the board to make any payments or any expenses related to creating the new municipality. Maybe if it's more specific, we can be on the same page and it's not just so anything you're spending money on, these are expenses that maybe Matthew, would that be acceptable?
But I think Matthew's correct. It's, it's, it may not even be anything, but that or that's responsible needs the authorization to, to be able to meet their obligations. Okay, it sounds like um, folks who moved this article are asking us to take this on faith. Um, so I don't know if we're ready to try to do that or not. Earl, I know you're so I just want to clarify, my understanding based on this conversation is we're going to elect a board on May 21st. They're going to meet. They're going to warn a meeting to vote on the budget uh, 30 days or so after their meeting, which brings us almost to July 1st. The new district has authority to borrow before July 1st to pay for any expenses, but those expenses cannot be incurred until after that budget vote, which is almost July. Is that correct? Because it says under a voter approved budget for the fiscal year beginning on that day. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Joe, I think that was right. The clause that under a voter approved budget refers to the district being fully on July 1st, under that budget. Okay, did we have a hand up in the middle? No? Okay. Yes, over here. I think, this is Leslie Finch from Palace. I think folks might be wondering, well, what kind of expenses are they going to be incurring before we hit July 1st? At which time we are hopeful that we will have a vote of the budget. It's going to be things that I may not be aware of, but things I do as we proceed to need to warn the meetings that we will have upcoming. Things have to be posted in the papers. We're going to have to provide notices to all of the members of the communities. That includes costs for printing, whether it's um, budgets and having to send those out, whether it's postcards, it's the postage. Um, we're also going to have to provide uh, ballots. Those are going to have to be ordered and printed. Those cost money and those are expenses of the um, to be formed unified district. And so I think it's that type of expense that they're wanting to have authorization to incur those expenses that will be paid by the voter who the budget comes we have it. So it's a little bit of the cart before the horse, but thus the authorization. We've got to have that in place. Okay, are we ready for the question? Yes. Okay, uh, do you need it read again? All those in favor of the article, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Aye. Ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it, and you've passed it. Uh, Article 9, to determine whether to authorize the Board of School Directors pursuant to the provisions of 16 VSA subsection 563, 10, and 11C to provide mailed notice to the residents of the availability of the annual report and proposed school budget in lieu of distributing the annual report and proposed budget. Would somebody like to move that article? Thank you, Chris. We have a second. Okay. Thank you. Discussion? Yes, in the middle. Cynthia Gardner Morris from Palace. Um, I find it interesting that this was referred to as one of the housekeeping type articles that would be fine for people to make decisions about it in the public without our voting on it. Because if you read it carefully, it says that when we send cards about the availability of the annual report in lieu of distributing the annual report and the budget, that means that if I want to read the budget, I either have to look it up online by the computer or I have to somehow ask somebody to mail it to me. I'm just getting notified. Any further 
discussion? Are you ready for the question? Yes, Carl. I'm sorry. I just want to be a stickler so that we don't get sued and do this correctly. I believe that the question we're voting on is to authorize the board to show the records, et cetera, and not to determine whether to. Yes, you're correct. Thank you. Further discussion? If not, the question is to authorize the Board of School Directors pursuant to provisions of 16 VSA, subsection 56310 and 11C to provide mailed notice to residents of the availability of the annual report and proposed school budget in lieu of distributing the annual report and proposed budget. If you're in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, the chair is in doubt, so let's, if you're in favor, please raise your cards. Okay, you can put them down. If you're opposed, raise your cards. And I believe that the ayes have it. And we have passed Article 9. And there being no other business, a motion to adjourn is in order. Okay, that's been moved. Do we have a second? Have a good evening. Thank you, everyone, for coming out and caring. And uh, enjoy the basketball game. to the agenda. I don't have the agenda. Any board comments? Any public comments and correspondence? Okay, we do have the minutes from February 19th. I'll give people a minute to look them over. They're fairly uh, brief. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of February 19th? So move. Okay. Second. Chris moves. Or Floor moved, Chris seconded. Is there any discussion of the minutes? All those in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. 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 Abstain. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the ayes have it. Uh, electing a clerk. Are there any nominations for the clerk position on this board? I'll do it. I'll second Chris. Laura is nominated Chris with Scott seconding. Are there any other nominations for clerk? Hearing none, all those in favor of Chris McVeigh uh, as clerk, please say aye. 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 Congratulations, Chris. Thank you for serving. Uh, tonight, I think we have to do really is 4.11 and 4.12. Uh, we can probably table 4.1, or I'm sorry, 4.1. Uh, 1 1 and 5.1, I should say, specifically have to be done tonight. So, um, in terms of publicizing the process for membership in new, the new board, uh, do we want to make some kind of public communication so that people know uh, that this board is going to be, there's an election on May 21st. If people want to run, they need to get petitions in by, to their town clerks by Monday, 5 p.m. on a Monday. I think Front Forum would be a good place to put that. Front Forum, for sure. How about the um, Times Argus? Huh? Put it in the Times Argus? Argus. Yep. Um, I'm betting it's going to be in an article in the Times Argus. In addition, in that, too. In that, as well. Sure. There were people that were signing up tonight. Yeah. So I would uh, recommend to the board that there are videos that we made it earlier that explain the configuration of the board. There were many questions of that tonight. That. We can point those in front porch form. Uh, we will get in, see how fast we can get an ad. Usually public ads, they turn around for public entities in 24 hours for a warning. We'll be putting this warning in the Times Argus. That's what our official posting place. 
uh, from the last meeting. So we'll get that out and we can reference all over the place. I'll have to change some of the videos, but right now the current videos without being the right date will explain the configuration, which there seemed to be some confusion on tonight about two representatives from each town elected by all five towns. So what I'm gonna, what I would suggest perhaps is that, um, Bill, you're gonna make these communications that are gonna go out to the entire entirety of the five towns via Front Porch Forum and via the newspaper. Yeah, correct? if you guys can do it, I can give you the links. It's how well, you do it. What, what I'm gonna suggest is, I'm gonna suggest that you do that, but I'm gonna ask the members of the transition board to make any other communication in your towns that you feel is appropriate or would, um, you know, best get the word out or encourage people to, to run, get their petitions in, um, because the, the sort of the petition process and the candidate process is on a town by town basis. Um, is so, it, so does that, that's a good point, point of clarification on the petition. Do the signatures need to be all from? the town yeah. that you're running yes. from? Yes. 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 Okay. And we need to make sure that that is in the advertisement. Right. It just is. Right. Good point. I mean, if people feel it should be done differently, if we want to try to coordinate it all to have it uniform I, and consistent, we can try to do that. But I don't have to be the one I'm just offering help. I think what you're suggesting is great. I think you should send that stuff out. I'm just saying my, my guess is that people will want to do town by town additional or clarifying communications just to be sure that we're covering our bases and does every that's... school have a facebook page because i know you put things yeah. on yeah, yeah we'll put it well, we can put it up there that makes sense. put it on all of them yeah okay. yeah mm -hmm. chris has access to all of them she can do a regular purpose thank you are people comfortable moving forward that way yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. all right we also have in front of us a, a draft warning Nice speaking. Of course, yep. Uh, Chris Leopold prepared this morning to meet your draft articles of agreement in the Vermont State Statute. Sorry, I'm standing. I just... um, also, um, the town clerks have worked to create petitions. Um, Chris just gave me extra copies of those here as well. Um, we would insert the day of the week and the date. He feels that the he went. You'll notice this is a little different than our previous warnings. Uh, that we've used with U32 when it's across all five towns. He likes to have the time up front and the polling places and times again at the bottom. And that there would be an article for each town for each two directors. So as you can see there, there's one for an article for Berlin, Callis, East Montpelier, Middlesex, and Worcester. And he's gone through this with the draft articles of agreement from the state and the um, and state statute. So do you need us, Bill, just to be clear, to uh, pass a motion authorizing this warning? I need you to adopt it, and then I have the official one that you will sign, and then um, we will put it in. Correct, correct dates, I'm sorry. We do, we, we, it doesn't have the correct dates on this one, but as we have done with other school, other warnings that you've all done with your local school boards, we insert this because that was determined at tonight's meeting. We have the second page where you will do today. And we'll just write in the day in that blank of today's date. Do people want to take a couple of moments to review the, the warning? Are we... Seems okay? Yeah. And that was that May 21st That's that May 21st date. This would Is there a motion to adopt the warning for a meeting of the Washington Central Unified Union School District on May 21st, 2019. So moved. Seconded. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So I'm going to start over here with Lindy with the official one. And okay. I know we don't have all the members, but if we have a majority, which is important, so that we can get this, the, and district clerk will make sure we get the other signatures and it gets out to the towns. The other items on our agenda which we can discuss maybe while the signature, signature is, uh, sheet is coming around are posting a warning for articles of agreement. Um, the transition board does have the authority to warn a meeting or, or a vote rather on articles of agreement. I think the 
the, I'll just say that the committee, actually, Floor, if you want to speak to this, you know more about it than I do, having run the committee, so. Well, we, I think you and I had this discussion, and we, we understand that we do have the authority to put the articles to vote, and we would try to have that vote if we come to, if we come to a, a consensus, which we did just on the recommendations, but we still have to finalize the final final. Uh, there were a couple of things that we had two options. If you guys, would, most of you were in this committee, not everybody, and come to a vote June 25th would be our hope. So that would be the same day we have the budget vote. Exactly. Right. Yeah. exactly. Yeah, the idea was to have the vote on the same day. Yeah. Um, but then we would need to have articles that we wanted to approve or warn finished by, you know, May 25th or whatever it is. Well, I would suggest to you So we would need meetings to finalize the Articles of Agreement, to discuss and finalize. Yes. We being the other people yeah. that the committee passed, kindly passed on uh, yeah. the yeah. remaining decisions to. Um, and then also pr probably uh, public hearings. Information. Yeah. yeah, informational meetings as well. So they, all that would have to happen before and May 25th. So and, and we would have to so, have them done and review, how long and review by, by the council. legal council. Yeah, right, so right. that would need, like, since he has reviewed most of it, would, could I it be a week or? For Chris. Okay. We have it. So I know that we have a couple options, but I don't think that would be much. I mean, okay. Probably a week. Anything okay. about Chris. And if he had poor warning, then he could schedule that time. But I think we'd have to look for dates for a meeting, obviously, the next meeting, possibly two next meetings. So can I discuss yeah, transition please. board meetings? Yeah. Um, so you'll note that I put a transition board meeting for tomorrow and for Thursday on my recommended schedule of meetings for you as a transition board. The biggest thing you needed to do this week is what the motion you just passed, which was to adopt the warning so we can get it posted. There's nothing pushing us for this week. As we get into coming back from April vacation, which is the week of the 23rd, I believe, um, we would need to start having probably regular meetings. How regular is how much discussion you want to get in on the articles of agreement and coming to a recommended budget that you'll recommend to the merge board. So um, I believe that merge budget would probably be at least two meetings, if not three. I don't think they'd be the only topic, but they would probably warrant some discussion so you can see what a merge budget looks like opposed to all the independent budgets. Remember that the executive committee recommended that we just put all the budgets of the six schools together. Uh, we actually have that done already, just because we had to get, Lori had to do that work to get to other work. Um, so it's not that it can't change, I just want to tell you it's not hard for us to bring you a merged budget. We're ready to go. So that, and I would see that you'd want it, you know, if you met, you would have one, two, three, you would have at least three meetings if you started the week coming back and you had one meeting a week to get you to the 21st, I believe, if I just counted in my head correctly. Yeah, but I can check my calendar. Do you want me to read the dates you had given us? I, I think I put them on Wednesdays. So one, two, three. Whoops. One. Twenty fourth or twenty fifth. Yeah. You would actually have four if you had one every Wednesday between now and the twenty first. Of Wednesday, Wednesday, I don't have a calendar. Is Wednesday the twenty fourth or the twenty fifth? That's an option. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Twenty fifth. Uh, probably the twenty fifth. Twenty fourth. Yeah. Twenty fourth is uh, Wednesday. 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 Is Wednesday. And twenty fifth is a Thursday. Twenty fifth is Thursday. And I was thinking this Wednesday. Wednesday. Uh, and then there would be the first, the eighth, and the fifteenth. There would be four meetings to get you before. So let me. Uh, does the transition board, by consensus, want to adopt that schedule of meetings, basically? For elementary, as a school board meeting on Wednesday the 
Yeah, there are others that do. Uh, Doty as well. Twenty fourth is a Tuesday. No. Twenty fourth is a Wednesday. Twenty fourth is a Wednesday. Twenty fifth. That would be our reorganizational board. Gotcha. Okay. We will appoint right. another person yeah. for this board. Yeah. So. So on the that would be on, on the Thursday then, and then every Wednesday following. What, what yes. would, so the April twenty fifth would be the first the one. April twenty fifth. That's the Callus board meeting. That's the Callus. This is this is what you're going to have. You're going to have yeah. this complex. Yeah. But right. could could we? Could, we, meet, could we meet at Callus? Could we meet at Callus? I'm actually not on the twenty fifth. You what? I'm not available on the twenty fifth. Susanna's not available on the twenty fifth. And I'm not comfortable doing it on the twenty fourth, having nobody from Berlin at that. Yeah, yeah, sure, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's not. Um, okay. We had it the 25th at Talus. I'm not available the 25th, and I think, Suzanne, you said you're not. I'm out of town. Yeah. So, okay. But I think we need to have this conference. Yeah, right. yeah. 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 We need a forum. Yeah, it is more important that we have a Berlin member, too, because if you, we don't even right. have yeah. one who yeah. seated. How many people could do it at the 25th, and can we? Well, if we made it callous, I can do it. Yeah. And that might, that might be some of what you need to do is yeah. Yeah. short other meetings. And, yep. you know, just go. Hopefully we do. All right. Well, we'll. I think I'll. I'll try to communicate with everyone and try to coordinate the a time on the twenty fifth and a place. Can I throw out an option with Berlin? We could do it at Berlin immediately following our board meeting. Actually. Yeah, my, my Whoever we elect that night. My preference would be to do they it. They would have to get sworn in. Right, but they could be, I don't think you'll be taking many actions. My preference would be to do it before the Callus meeting if that's humanly possible. I'm rather than it. doing it the late night, sort of uh, following the night meeting the day before. But. Oh, well, and the other thing that Callus will be having, it, like a, a town wide school meeting on the 23rd, so we might be able to take care of some um, other business then. Um, shortening okay the other one we'll, we'll see if it can work out. all right okay so we'll work that out yep by email and then plan on the other wednesdays in, in may following so do you want to say the dates of the other ones so people can put them in yeah it's may, may 2nd may 9th and may well, 2nd no, no, may 2nd is no, not a wednesday may 1st may 8th those are thursdays yeah. oh, sorry oh you wrote may 1st plus it will transition so Thursdays. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I meant. Why well, put them on Thursday? Thinking there's a, there's going to be conflicts either way. So you could the first, eighth, and fifteenth would be Wednesdays. If it says on there the second, ninth, and sixteenth, it's probably because I was trying to avoid. Well, the conflicts. second, ninth, and sixteenth currently uh, would avoid a lot of conflicts the except second, for cows. The second and ninth, the ninth avoid conflicts. Yeah. yeah. Right. Just on the bad. first, there's a U32 meeting. On the yeah. Eighth, there's a Doty meeting. Yeah. So. yeah. Uh, there was a reason to my madness when I wrote we'll it. We'll go with the second and the ninth. So it's three Thursdays in a row. And there's a 15th. What about the 25th? Yeah. 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 And the 15th. Yes. Second, ninth, and 15th. It's two Thursdays and a Wednesday. <coughs> we'll, we'll, we'll communicate that out to people okay. in an email concisely. And where did we land? So, Matt, to the clarify. The yeah. So, Thursday, April 25th is a Thursday. Yeah. <coughs> May 2nd is a Thursday. 25th is to be confirmed. Okay. We'll do some communication about time and place and possibility. Then, and then, then what we're going to say, we're going to put May 2nd, May 9th, and May 15th on the calendar. Okay. Two Thursdays and a Wednesday. Obviously, it can change if people have major life events, whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do they all be at six, or do we want to start? <laughs> start, start yeah. One of the twenty fifth can't be at six, so we have no, to figure that yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, what about the other ones? Yeah. I don't know. Susanna and I are meeting tomorrow morning to do the Cal's agenda, so we'll look at that, Dorothy, and get out to the Cal's board. What's on it? Yeah, maybe we can put some of the agenda on the twenty third. Or maybe we can start a little. Early. We'll ask the Cal's board. For the meetings in May, are people available to start at five thirty? If we can do that. <clears throat> yep. So let's try to do that so we can start as early as we can, I guess. So, right. Okay, are there any other future agenda items besides the ones we already have discussed? Articles of agreement, budget. What about um, a public forum to meet the candidates? I heard that expressed in the meeting. 
Yep. Um, so that's a good idea. I think we want to see who gets, who is actually going to be on the ballot. I guess. We'll go you know, we'll go the fifteenth. Petitions are due on the fifteenth. Yeah. And then, so I think when you meet on the twenty-fifth, you could set a couple public forums in different towns. Maybe a couple of them part of those. They could be. Yeah. Good idea, Chris. Yeah. So we can talk about that on the 25th. That'd be a good future agenda. Anything else? I guess how are we communicating to the public? <coughs> about what? Well, that, that doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter because we will be communicating about the public. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never. Okay. All right. If there's nothing else, then we will adjourn by consensus at 8:47. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank you.